Welcome to another video from Robotic Mower Services. Uh, we're going to continue here with another If This Then That video. And this one's going to be a game changer for a lot of you out there. Because there's a lot of people that don't know uh, this little trick here, but it's one that a bunch of us dealers have been using for years. And it, it's something that's going to be very beneficial in trying to dial in the performance of your automower, diagnosing issues and everything. So uh, stay tuned here and follow along because you're going to be very interested in this one. Trust me. All right, so the first thing you got to do is log in to your IFTTTT account. And uh, we're going to go up here to create because we're going to create a new applet. So again, you can do this in your web browser. You can do this in the app on your smart device, however. So click create. And we're going to start with the if this part. And you want to click on add. And that will bring up your services here. And down here in the search bar, you want to type in Husqvarna. And you're not even going to have to get the whole thing in. You're going to see the Husqvarna Automotive Connect app pop up there. And that's what you're going to want to pick. You're going to click on Husqvarna Automower. So now we'll go in here to all the different triggers for the Husqvarna Automower Connect app um, that work with if this, then that. Scroll on down through here. You can see there's a whole bunch of different ones. And, of course, you get to the bottom, and it gives you the option to add more. But the one that we want, the really important one, is already listed on here, and that is... Where is that here? I just saw it. Uh, right here. Automower status has changed. This is the one we want. So we're going to select that. So that's going to bring us to the window here where you see the uh, Automower Connect account. And then the Automower, depending if you have multiple Automowers or not, there is a drop down menu. So you can just scroll on through, pick the Automower that you want to connect this uh, applet to. We're going to use our Robotic Mower Services 450XH demo that we have out there running around. And then you're just going to hit Create Trigger. So we come back to this screen here, and we're going to do the Then That part. So you want to click on Add, and that will take us to choosing our service that we want to use. Now on this screen here, we're going to go to the search bar, and we're going to type in Google. So you type that in, and that'll bring up some options here from Google. And we're going to scroll down. And here's the one we want, Google Sheets, right here in the middle. So we select Google Sheets, and that comes in here to the screen to choose an action. And the one we want is over here, Add Row to Spreadsheet. So we're going to select that. And now here we got our options, Add Row to Spreadsheet. We get down here, you see the, uh, the Google account. That's our robotic motor services at gmail.com. So you have to have a Gmail account to do this. Um, Spreadsheet name, the generic one is Automower Status Log. We are going to change that so we know which one we're looking at because we have multiple mowers that we're keeping these uh, status logs on. So we're going to change that to 450XH to match the, uh, the mower that we have, the mower name that we have in Automower Connect. Then down here, um, formatted row, you can add ingredient and you'll see here in a bit what this is, but we want to put a timestamp on here. Um, there's the options for latitude, longitude, and you can add a Google Map URL on there. So um, this will all make more sense once you see the spreadsheet, but that's something you can add if you want to know an exact location of where something is happening. Um, message, that's already on there. Status, that's already on there. You know, all these things are already selected up there. So we're going to move on here. Um, see our drive folder path. That's not really a big deal, but we're going to hit Create Action. So after it creates the action, you see our if, and then you see our then, and you want to hit continue. So here we are at the finish and review screen. You can see it just gives you a summary saying that if our Automower uh, changes its status on the Automower Connect app, then it's going to add a new row to the robotic mower services at gmail.com a Google Drive spreadsheet. Uh, you do want to scroll down here and hit finish. And after you hit finish, you're going to go and see basically the same thing again. You're going to see a summary here of it. And uh, you want to make sure to scroll down and make sure it says connected so that way it's going to be working. So that's it. This applet is now created and this is going to put a new line on a spreadsheet every time that status changes on your Automotor Connect app. So what does that mean? Why is this such a big deal? How is this going to help you? Well, let's take a look at one of these spreadsheets. All right, so here we are on the Google homepage. You have to make sure you're logged into your Google account compared to the little dots. Tap on that, 
scroll on down here to sheets that's what we want and we're going to look at this one here because this one i know has a lot of stuff that i can show you uh as far as how this will be helpful for you so you bring up this spreadsheet and you can see over here you got your time stamp which i added june 29th 2023 at 5 31 p.m the name of the automower uh the status at that point and it gives you a little bit of a description over here as to what it is. Like here, is mowing your lawn outside of its set schedule? Is returning to charging station? Is charging will start again in less than 40 minutes on its way to cut your grass? Blah, 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 on and on and on, right? So here is one of the main ways where this will be beneficial to you. We get a lot of people calling and saying, well, my mower died like three days in a row before it made it back to the charging station. Pretty sure it needs a new battery, right? It's got to be the battery. Can't be anything else. Has to be the battery. And I usually say, well, before we just go condemning the battery, let's make sure that there's not something else that's causing the mower to not be able to make it back to the charging station. And, you know, a lot of people are just kind of confused by that. Well, the battery went dead. It's got to be the battery, right? Well, here's where this comes in very handy. Because if you go on down through here, you can see where this was mowing right here. Then it starts to go home. 8.21 p.m., it starts to go home. At 8.42 p.m., it's finally charging. So that means from 8.21 p.m. to 8.42 p.m., this thing was searching for its way back to the charging station. 21 minutes, this thing was searching for its way back to the charger. That's a long time. I know some people have some pretty complex layouts and things of that nature, but... 21 minutes is a, is a long time for a mower to be searching to find its way home. If we go on down through here, we'll see right here, going home at 10.37 p.m. By 10.40 p.m., it's charging. So that time it only took three minutes. Then we go on down here, going home, 12.34 a.m. Finally gets back to the charging station and starts charging at 1.07 a.m., 33 minutes that time. If we go and look at uh, when it goes out to mow, here it says uh, mowing primary area. The schedule is overridden. Um, actually, that's not what I want to look at here. Uh, well, here's another one. Going home. This one's really bad. It starts going home at 3.01 a.m. It doesn't get back to the charging station and start charging until 3.56 a.m. 55 minutes that mower was wandering around trying to find its way back to the charging station. Luckily, it didn't die, or to given the line here saying that um, there was an error and the battery um, was dead. Uh, here we go. Charging at 6.02 a.m. It's leaving at 6.27 a.m. Mowing primary area overridden schedule, uh, but one minute to get to where it needed to be out in the yard to start mowing. 7.56 a.m. It's going home. 8.41 a.m. It's finally charging. So... <laughs> Again, you, you've got like 45 minutes there where it was searching for its way back to the charging station. Um, here you can see error, stop, paused, all that stuff that came up. Uh, going down here. Here we go. Leaving. Leaving the charging station, 8.29 p.m. by 8.34 p.m. Five minutes later, it's out in the primary area at a spot where it needed to be to start mowing again. So it's having no problems finding its way out of the charging station and to the areas where it needs to mow. Five minutes, we saw two minutes. Um, here's one where it's going home, 8.43 p.m. It's parked until further notice. That means it's in the charging station, 8.52 p.m. Uh, here's one charging, and then it switches to leaving, and then to mowing the primary area according to schedule. So that was one minute between it leaving at 8.37 p.m. and 8.38 p.m. It's out there mowing the primary area. So again, it has no problem getting out and getting to those areas where it needs to go. Uh, let's find another good one here. Going home at 1.58 p.m. Starts charging at 1.51 p.m. Again, way too much time to find its way home. Now, you're saying, okay, well, what does that tell you? That, you know, one time it's, it's getting there pretty quickly, another time it's not getting there that fast. You know, it's taking forever to get there. Well, that tells me that there is an issue with something other than the battery, because our times where it's mowing, uh, here mowing according to primary schedule, again, 8.38 p.m., it starts mowing. It doesn't start going home until 
9.22 p.m. That's almost an hour at mode. Um, you know, we we have plenty of indication here where the mower, the battery is holding out in the mower for as long as it needs to to be able to get the job done. But it's a struggle getting back to the charging station. So this is where you'd want to start to look and make sure that your search times are adjusted down and see if that makes a difference. It could also mean that one of your guide wires is not working. Those times where the, the mower is getting back to the charging station pretty quickly, you know, we had those times where it was like two or three minutes. Um, uh, this is one where it takes forever. Uh, go, yeah, that was another one that took forever. Oh, here, going home at 5.55 a.m., seven minutes later. That's more realistic. Seven minutes later, it's back there and charging. Um, so obviously going out of the charging station, it goes out pretty quickly, um, but coming in, you know, you, you must have at least one guide wire out of the two that's working, or maybe you don't have a second guide wire, and that's the problem. You know, there's long times that it takes to get back. Put the second guide wire in if you don't have one. See if that fixes it. Um, but this is where you could also add that, that Google Maps URL on there. So it would be a web, a web address, and you can copy and paste that, put it into Google Maps, and it will show you, like, you know, right where it stopped uh, working at on the map. You know, it'll give you the longitude, latitude, and all that stuff. So you can kind of narrow it down, too, you know, to figure out which guide wire it is. But, I mean, if you've got something like this going on, go back and just test both guide wires. Do a continuity test on them. Um, you know, if you want to do a, a real quick test, you can swap it out with a, with a boundary wire, see if the light turns to flashing blue so you know one of them's broken. You know, um, take the mower out to the areas, you know, pretty far away from the charging station and tell it to follow the guide wire back. See if it runs into an issue where it can't get through a corridor anymore or it hits a groundhog hole or something. It turns it around to keep sending it back the opposite way. Um, there's a lot of stuff there you can look at that this is going to show you and prove to you, hey, this is what the real issue is here. Uh, also, you know, some people will say, well, you know, it's just not mowing as long as it used to. My mower used to mow for five hours. Now it only mows for 45 minutes. Okay, what's your proof of that? Well, just what I think it is. That's what I think is going on. No, this here actually tells you that it, it's mowing the primary area. It's going home. It's mowing the primary area. It's going home. This gives you times to go by. Um, you can see here we overrid the schedule. But again, 7.09 to 8.21 p.m., for an all-wheel drive auto mower, that's over an hour. That's, uh, you know, that's pretty good for it to be out there mowing that long. That's pretty consistent from what we've seen from them. Uh, here again, mowing the primary area starts at 9:12. It's going home at 10:37. Again, we got over an hour. That's that's an hour and 25 minutes. So you're getting close to an hour and a half. That's really good for an all-wheel drive mower. If we had times where it said um, there was leaving and mowing the primary area and it starts mowing at 9 12 p.m and then at 9 30 it's finding its way back to the charging station then we got a problem you know it's definitely not mowing as long as it used to or if uh you know it, it says it's mowing for for um say 30 minutes and it's back in the charging station and it's taking forever to charge you know we can tell what our charge times are here here's when it starts charging 10 40 p.m by 11.05 p.m., that is 25 minutes later. It's charged up, and it's leaving going back out to mow. Here at 1.07 a.m., it's charging. By 1.37, half an hour later, it's leaving. It's going back out to mow again. We can tell all of that stuff right here from these different lines on this spreadsheet. So this is going to be very beneficial to all of you guys out there with automowers that have Automower Connect. You can all do this, you know, um, you can, you can use up to two applets for free from if this, then that, or you can pay the extra money, you know, to have the extra applets. So you can do this. You can have it connected to, um, to uh, you know, something related to weather. So you can tell it to automatically get back to the charging station when it starts to rain and do these other things with it. Um, what's really cool about this is if you're having these issues, like you call us and you say, I think there's an issue with my battery and – we say, well, you know, what kind of proof do you have of that, <laughs> you know, that you you have a shorter one time than you used to, you can you can just save this and email it to us, and we can go back through and we can look at all these lines on the spreadsheet just like this and be like, well, yeah, right here, you know, 
we've definitely got some issues going on. Or, uh, you know, it looks like it's taking an awful long time for it to get back to the charging station. You know, we can we can go through this and we can take a look at it and help you to diagnose the issues with your mower, what you can look at next and that kind of stuff. It also gives us something that we can send on to Husqvarna and say, hey, there's an issue with this mower's battery. Um, you know, here's what it was doing it was out in the field. We brought it in. We looked at it, blah, 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 blah. But we have some more concrete evidence here to support our, our claims, you know, um, of something not working right, something just not doing what it's supposed to do, something not working long enough. It's all right here. So that's why this is, again, just a, a valuable tool for anybody and everybody out there to access and use. So I hope you guys enjoyed that information right there. It was worth sitting through the video uh, to learn how to do that, and uh, you'll get a lot of benefit out of it. Uh, as always, if you're looking to buy an automower, automower parts, automower accessories, you need technical support for your automower, the first place to start is our website www.roboticmowerservices.com. You don't see what you're looking for on there. You can't find it. Uh, you can click on one of the buttons on our, our website to send us a message through the website, or you can shoot us an email, roboticmowerservices at gmail.com. As always, be sure to subscribe to this channel, and thank you for watching.